How's it going, Critter family? I hope you all are doing well. Today we're going over a video from the Healer Mama. Um, healer as in Blue Healer, um, or Australian Cattle Dog. Um, you know, she, as you can see, <laughs> she has a bunch of healer dogs. Um, so if you have not checked her out, please feel free to go check her out right now. She's a great little channel. Um, I want to cover her, uh, this specific video today because I saw that she's having trouble with uh, one of her healers uh, named Sully. Um, she calls him Mr. Man. And I believe he has a bit of reactivity in his his background. She's had him since he's a puppy, I believe. Um, and I think he's around two. I could be wrong. Um, but either way, this video I just thought was was very interesting. And I just thought that I could, you know, I wanted to cover it to maybe answer a couple of things for her, you know, or, or encourage her or just, you know, give her um, a little bit of, of, you know, of course, non-solicited advice, <laughs> you know, uh, but just kind of answer some questions that, that she may just kind of have put out there into into the world. Um, you know, great channel. Go check her out. Um, I think she's close to 14,000 subscribers, so go check her out if you're interested in that kind of stuff. Um, she did shout out uh, uh, my channel, so thank you so much, uh, Miss Healer Mama. Um, I do appreciate the kind words that you um, that you said. Uh, you know, and she she covered um, a video recently about um, training tools and how they're you know, and, and in doing so, she um, referenced to one of the videos I've covered, uh, you know, where a Rottweiler shuts down to a, a trainer being absolutely, in my opinion, just abusive. Um, but so either way, if if you like you know blue healers or um, you know lots of cute little antics, then be sure to go check out her channel, The Healer Mama. So let's get started. I'm just going to be, you know, no hate, no, no, no shame, no nothing. I'm just uh, trying to you know, give some, again, unsolicited advice. <laughs> I'm just, I feel so done. I'm just done with training this dog. Like I just, and I know I still need to. And, you know, we all know that Sully's reactivity is definitely largely based in lack of practice on, on, on most things. But And I just want to say I've been there before. I have, oh, sorry. Somebody recently said, like, you make me sick when you roll the, the little mouse around. Okay, I'm sorry. I talk with my hands. So I'll try to take them off the mouse. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I've been there before with, with my Shiba Adonis. You know, rest in peace, good old man. Um, I've been there with him so many times in the 12 years that he was alive. <laughs> Honestly, uh, you know, you're going to have your ups and downs. And, and obviously, you know, he's, he's the only dog I've ever had. She's had seven healers, I think, or at least several um in her past but you know with each dog they're different and they teach you something new um doesn't mean you're not going to be tired of it doesn't mean that you're you're going to have all the answers um but just know that you're not alone you know i keep thinking back to when he was a baby oh look at like that little potato try to visit and granted we didn't oh have goodness. a lot happen but you know people used to be able to oh pet him and oh, he, he never would react right away with like you know his siren bark that he does and it's like don't chew on I keep door. trying to figure out don't where we went wrong door. like what happened and yes I know Aww. someone's gonna say to me once again you know cattle dogs nip you know cattle dogs are protective obviously I know that by now I'm on number seven I mean it's, it's, <laughs> and yeah you know some of that can come with you know I see it as anxiety um can come with maturity or certain behaviors that they learn and they practice um, you know, I've worked with a lot of dogs, specifically the shepherds, um, that start to show that what people will, you know, call guardiness, you know, I call it, you know, the, the dogs are maturing and coming into their brain and they're starting to experience different, you know, um, scenarios where they're anxious in it. And whereas before, maybe they not, may not have noticed that, you know, puberty and all that good stuff. So, um, you know, hormones have a lot to change, you know, the, the way we think hormones are very powerful with our emotions not it's not a surprise to me that ah, they diga, diga, diga. do what they do it's the fact that it's starting again it. and it's it's i'm so tired of like the back and forth between okay we we've got this i see progress we're, we're there so one thing i'm i'm curious about i i you know haven't followed her you know until you know recently but i i'm curious as to when these problems first started arising and how quickly they became apparent um, because whenever we're, we're thinking about behavior, at least when I think about behavior, um, you know, I think about, I've learned over the years that, okay, I, I pay attention to any little change. So if my dog starts becoming, you know, say for example, say 
sensitive around um, me touching uh, their their ribs or their midsection, and they start you know it starts with a kind of a flinch, um, and they start to move away, and maybe it might progress over time to you know they bump you with their nose and they kind of nip at you, or they just touch you with their teeth and they nip at you, and then they go into more and more of a bite or a a growl or something like that. That progressively happens over time, whether it, you know. It's a couple of days, a couple of months, but it slowly does progress. You know, unless you're just wrestling wrestling your dog all day, you're not going to notice that change very quickly. Um, so with Sully, what were, you know, the first signs? And for me, whenever I notice the first signs, of course, I've taught myself over the years that as soon as I see the first sign of a dog being, you know, anxious or, or afraid of something, if we're walking a dog just, you know, spooks like crazy to a trash can or, or a car driving by and they start barking at it, I'd say, okay, this is a little red flag. Let me keep a note and we'll see if this happens again. If it happens two or three times, I say, okay, I'm going to, this is what we need to start working on, you know, progressively um, and, and generalize it um, slowly over time. This is the first thing on my list. This is my new priority is working on this spooky thing and, and seeing, okay, is it just the noise? Is it the motion and the noise? Is it the smell? Is it the environment too stimulating? And just kind of work things out that way. So I'm not saying that she hasn't done any of this. Um, I'm just curious about, you know, when the problems started as soon as you can, you know, kind of become aware of that and how quickly they progressed. And then he reverts back for whatever reason. And trying to figure out some of those triggers just, it sucks because it's like I'm not in his head. I don't know exactly what's going on, but it's like I see all these good things that he's experienced, like good situations, and it's like, but then me and my husband were talking and we were thinking back to when he had a surgery. And so she brings up a really good point here. I'm just going to pause real quick um, to say that for me, when I see a dog who has a trigger or something they're nervous about, I mean, I'm a, I'm a trainer, you know, so that's that's what I do. Literally, I'm the biggest dog nerd on the planet, probably, or, or one of them. Um, I enjoy thinking about how to work on a dog's trigger. So whenever I see a new trigger, I think, okay, perfect. This is something that we can work on. Back to the trash can, if your dog walks by and they're totally fine, say it's a totally safe, generalized dog, they're totally desensitized, they're good to go. But one day they freak out to a bottle cap or a trash can or I don't know, something random. Um, a person with a hat, I say, okay, there's something else that we can work on to help prepare our dog to make them um, more... Uh, more stable you know help them become more confident um so she has i think at least three healers um and and, and i'm sure kids you know and a whole family and, you know busy life so you know she doesn't live this every day i, I don't know what she lives every day but um i, I can understand that would be frustrating and hard to do uh, but that's just where i come from is, is kind of changing how you view things from a negative to a positive and that is definitely when he started to really have trust issues with people and nowadays it's like he has trust issues with every person he meets like it doesn't matter if he takes a cookie from you mm -hmm. if you try to go to pet him or try to build any kind of thing further past that cookie he will snap okay so this is also a good point that she mentioned surgery um i don't know if he's been neutered or not um it could have been entirely different surgery but you know being neutered again we we changed the um Hormones, you know, we change the, the, the way the dog thinks and feels because hormones, you know, have a lot to do with emotional state and how you think and feel. And a lot of dogs can become more anxious afterwards um, and, and less, you know, lose their confidence or, or become more confident afterwards. It just depends on the individual um, as well as the, you know, environment that they grow up in. You know, it's nature and nurture. Um, but as far as, you know, when we're dealing with using treats and, and you know, as she says, cookies, you know, Lots of dogs I've worked with, tons of them, because I specialize in, in reactivity and, and aggression, you know, tons of them, you can give them a cookie and they immediately run away and start growling at you. I expect that. I don't expect to be friends. You know, uh, my goal is to get them to tolerate me. Um, but it's also not just the fact that I'm, get, you know, throwing uh, treats and cookies at them and expecting that to work. It's also how you use the method and if it's being used properly. So I'm not saying anybody here hasn't been using it properly, but you know, for example, if I were working with Sully, I wouldn't ever expect to touch him, you know, or, or that's, dogs for me have the right to remove consent. They have the right to say no. I'm not going to try to pet him. I'm not gonna try and be friends with him. I just want him to be able to 
trust that I'm not going to hurt him and I can interact safely with him. So if I were working with him, um, you know, the people who work with them, are they working too fast? Are they trying to, I'm going to use the mouse real quick, are they trying to touch him? If they try to touch him, where are they trying to touch him? Are they, you know, bending over him or are they kneeling down or are they sitting down? Do they have their back to him? Do they have their front to him? Do they have the side to him? Are they reaching out with their hand and being kind of spooky? Like when you're trying to pet a cat, but you're afraid it's going to scratch you and then it scratches you regardless because you're being spooky. You're not being predictable. When you try to pet him, are you petting him on the face, by the mouth, under the chest? Are you holding a cookie and trying to distract him while you try to pet him? There's a whole number of things that your dogs will see that we don't. And then we think, you know, oh, well, positive reinforcement doesn't work. I'm not saying the healer mommy, the, the, <laughs> I'm not saying at all that the healer mama is saying that. You know, I, I'm you know, using what other people say that they, they think that positive reinforcement doesn't work. And, you know, that's where you get into dog daddy territory and all that, which, uh, which I don't believe the healer mama it, it enjoys dog daddy any bit, uh, you know, any bit more than I do. Um, but when you're working with them, you know, you can toss a treat, they'll go get it, they'll start growling. You can, you know, slowly start teaching the dog and desensitizing them, even if they don't necessarily like it, they can tolerate it. But um, if I'm working with a dog and, and, you know, I toss them a cookie and I'm, I'm not making progress, then I want to up the uh, reinforcement because I want it to become, you know, more... I want to become more engaging for the dog. Maybe I'll use a ball. Maybe I'll play with a ball. I work with a, I've worked with a, I mean, I work, I still work with to this day, um, an Australian Shepherd that is very, very uh, reactive, you know, to pretty much anything in the outside world. She doesn't get out much. Uh, and then since be, it's the end of the circle, because she's reactive, she doesn't get out much. And when she does get out, she's reactive, blah, blah, blah. So um, I'm pretty much one of the only people who, can just come in the house and, and stay overnight and pet sit for her um, and work with her. And it took time. You know, we, you know, we, we, we faded out from the food into playing, you know, with a ball and all that. And that took time with Lola. Um, you don't just, you know, go over and expect to start petting. When the people are, are trying to interact with a dog like this, are they making eye contact? Are they holding eye contact? You know, all these little minute things that you do with your body language, the dog will tell you whether you're doing it right or not. So sorry, I didn't, you all my cow dogs have I didn't expect to go on that long of a tangent, but that's just how they are. But it's the fact that he goes into that immediate mindset of, you know, let's attack them, you know, kill mode, as we call it in our house. And I even had to take him to the vet again recently, you know, for a minor like injury he got. And he's fine. Don't worry. He's he's all good. But it's okay, like while we're at the vet, I saw the immediate fear that he had for those people and the way he curled up into me and Aww. I put a muzzle on him because I, I could see he was about to lunge. They all could see he was about to lunge. Like he, he had whale eyes, mm -hmm. all body language signs were pointing to, he is going to attack one of these people. But you know, he did great for the exam and let them, you know, do. So I don't know that he, I mean, I, I don't know this dog. I'm not saying that she doesn't know her own dog. Obviously she knows better than I do, but when I see dogs that are anxious, I don't necessarily see they're going to attack because for me, the definition of attack is, you know, different from everybody else. Uh, you know, it might be different from person to person, but, you know, attack, I would think a lunge or a snap to get them to leave him alone and then he would probably, you know, back off. But again, I don't know this dog, but most of the time when I see a dog, you know, they don't necessarily attack as in to, to maul and cause serious damage. Like, they can still cause damage with a snap, but, um, he seems nervous enough that he just wants them to leave him alone and he does as much as he needs to to get that space. Whatever they needed to do. And, you know, he also took cookies from the vet, but then at the end, after Good. like five cookies, he started to get the whale eyes again and started to look like he wanted to attack her. And he's always been leery of people, you know, breed trait, but it's like the idea that he has in his head now that he should lunge and attack after the cookie or that he just should automatically protect his bubble. Like, I don't know where that happened except for me. So I'm just going to you know, pause again right here. Well, actually, we'll play it. Maybe after that surgery, because I know I've noticed a lot of behavioral changes after that surgery, you know, being away from mother, you know, and then, of course, all the pain he went through because they took out the staples without giving him anything. You know, oh, gosh. That, that trigger or traumatize a pup, too. Absolutely. Kind of like, how do I fix this trauma? So I'm just going to 
pause it right there and answer a couple of things that when it comes to the vet and you're giving giving your dog like some biscuits or, or cookies or whatever it may be a little treat um again how what is their body language like are they holding eye contact with the dog if they make eye contact it's normal for people to do that but for dogs it's very challenging and very intimidating when you make eye contact with the dog are they staring at the dog are they blinking are they looking away you know veterinarians most of the time nothing against vets by any mean you know they 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 know a whole lot but they don't necessarily know a lot about timing with 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 training or timing you know they they know body language and such you know but they 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 don't study a lot of training from the majority of the vets that i've seen and been to i'm not saying that they're all like that this is nothing against vets at all but they don't necessarily know a lot of uh, you know they just don't necessarily know how to prevent things like that you know they don't they don't work it every day so if i were sitting there you know if she's giving the dog you know five little you know biscuits or pieces of milk bone whatever it is and the dog's able to take it yes they're taking food so they're under threshold enough to take food but at the same time what is your dog doing i want to see the uh you know i would like to see the the body language what is your dog doing you know is he still cowering while he's taking the cookies how is he taking them how is the vet interacting with the dog you know are they standing over him are they talking to you and occasionally tossing a cookie are they sitting there staring at him the whole time talking to him facing him the whole time all of that can absolutely make sense that the dog would eventually want to lunge because she's staring at him the whole time and he finally realizes that she's staring at him and he's had enough and he gives her a warning sign of whale eyes you know for humans this is normal but say she were you know her dog you see these eyes um and they they as soon as they make contact with you you know a split second later the dog could start to lunge um and that would make sense because the dog is saying to you back off and humans react slower to things than than dogs do um you know like they say with horses the only thing faster than a horse kick is a horse's response um so they're you know they can avoid getting kicked you know animals know how to read each other very well because they live off of understanding body language um so i'm not saying anything against the vet or anything i'm just saying that that you know a lot of different humans you know can when we're interacting and training you know everybody who interacts with a dog is training them we can make it confusing for the dog or we can be sending a lot of mixed signals um you know to our dog so most of the time if i'm interacting with other people you know i i allow you know i would teach the dog to look at the vet and then look back at me and i would do the timing of the reward um if if the vet or other people i'm working with is staring at the dog too much i will call the dog away and teach the dog you can move away from something that's scary so you don't feel trapped even in a vet's office um you know it, it, to a degree i mean sometimes you just got to get in there and do whatever you need to i think it's unfortunate that the poor little guy had staples and all that removed without any painkiller i'm sure that absolutely has a lot to do with distrust at least particularly in the vet's office and I know, you know, fixing trauma with dogs can be very difficult if that's what's causing this. You know, when I was a groomer, I used to, you know, lay down on the floor and sing to certain dogs. Oh, know, that's and, awesome. And really take a long, long time to give them a nail. Very, very to get them cool. comfortable again with, with being with a groomer because they had bad experiences. Very with cool. Groomer, I know. definitely appreciate that. Um, Adonis, when he was little, you know, before I really knew anything. You know, I took him to like a pet smart groomer, you know, twice on, on two occasions. And after that, you know, I, I think he was, he was, you know, I don't have proof, but I think he was certainly, I know he was traumatized and, and possibly abused. I mean, he, they said that he was the groomer working on Donis at the time when he was like, I don't know, you know, under like six months old or just under five or six months old. Um, at the time when, when Adonis was in the groomers and you know, he was like maybe like a year or two old um you know they said that the 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 groomer the groomer apparently had 10 complaints on him and nothing happened and dog you know adonis apparently was so traumatized that he just like he pooped himself on the table he soiled himself he was just terrified to ever go back inside the building again so i do appreciate so much that she uh, and there's a lot of groomers out there that are really rough with dogs like i get they work with them but i have high standards when it comes to interacting with dogs but i appreciate that she you know gets on the ground she takes the time it takes with with a client's dog not even just her own dog so i you know kudos i so give it's you like there there's ways to treat this but it's like people are so afraid of him and it, it that's that's really hard to retrain that trauma i know he's not the worst cattle dog out there like not that i think any cattle dog's bad or the worst but you know his 
level of reactivity isn't as bad it's as it difficult used to, be, to work for sure, with, but, for sure or like others but it's still there it's like when i take him to stores and stuff or out in public it's like he's choosing now to make the wrong decision if that makes sense like my girls are really good about when they're put in a situation of a strange dog or a person that they are leery of you know mm-hmm. They will, they will do their bark protective thing, too, but they know when to stop. And they know when to come back and to continue on things with mom, you know. With Sully, it, it's very, like, let's kill it now, or let's attack it. Or, like, he's so fearful. Okay, and- so I would say at this point, if you know that, if you can see that he has this reaction in public, first thing I would suggest is... Um, and of course, you know, she doesn't have to take any of this advice. Nobody does. You know, nobody has to listen to this. Uh, but, you know, first thing I would do is, okay, stop taking him to areas where we know that he is going to be, or we even think, have the slightest inkling that he is going to be reactive. Um, because if we do know his triggers, then we, we stop taking him to areas where he's practicing or reinforcing this behavior. Even reinforcing where he, he as she says, makes the wrong decision, he's practicing that behavior and reinforces the belief that hey if i i I act like i want to kill it now they don't even try to come mess with me get them before they get me so i would start in a very low distraction setting you know zero distraction start in the home and really get that behavior of him being able to focus on you even with your even with your other dogs uh, nearby you know you, you can toss toys and things like that then go to an area where you have maybe a couple of people. You know, go to a human park, sit on the very edge, as my mentor, uh, you know, used to put it, there's a target, you know, a, a, a visualize a target. The outer ring is, say, you go to a Home Depot and or a Hobby Lobby or something, and you just stand, you're just sitting in the car. And then eventually you get out the car and you just circle the car a couple times, reward for calm behavior. And then you start, you know, walking a little bit in and out of the the parking lot and reward for any calm behavior. If they start to react, retreat. Or I I always create space, we go back to the car, it's our safe space. And practice that over time. And you can have sessions as short as five minutes or maybe as long as as 20 minutes, you know, 30 minutes, I would say absolutely max. Um, But if you ever watch my channel, you can go to, you know, videos where I, the the playlist of reactivity where I was working with Zeus in the car and we were outside of CVS, Um, you know, same thing with Mr. Sully, you know, and then you eventually move to like the, you know, uh, you know, the, the outside of the store. You just go stand out front, walk around a little bit and then leave, walk around a little bit, stand there. You know, when you can teach your dog, when your dog, when Mr. Sully can, can do sits and downs and stays with people walking by, then you can start moving inside the store. That would be the second ring where you walk, you know, of this target visual, you know, the second ring is, is you go inside the store and you just go around the, the inside perimeter not in, in and out of the, the aisles yet. You're just walking around a little bit and then you leave. And you practice that until that is just, you know, practice it into the ground until it's boring. You know he can handle it. Then you start going in and out of the aisles, so on and so forth. And then you can start adding, you know, with that, there's more people. There's more noises. There's, uh, you know, you can go to places where there's more dogs. Work at Sully's pace. And always keep it. I, I, I always like, you know, I always tell my, my clients that if it looks like you're rewarding for nothing at all, then you're doing it right. We don't want to wait until our dog is reacting to drag him out of it or correct them um, or, or tell him no or whatever. You know, we, we want to be able to, if you're in an area and there's five people, if you're in the park and there's five people in the park and, and you're just walking Sully and he's not reacting, reward for that. Reward for him sitting there. Reward for him sniffing a bug. <laughs> reward for him making friends with a butterfly, whatever. If he's able to look at those people and look away on his own, reward for that. If he's looking at those people and you have to call his name, that's okay. Reward for that. And over time, you can slowly ask for more behavior or you can let the, the, the environment be his reward. He gets to sniff. Sniffing is really important for dogs. Um, you know, maybe he gets to meet the person or he gets to just sniff the person and, you know, you can, you can work this out ahead of time and say, hey, are you comfortable if my dog just comes up to sniff and we walk away? You know, don't say hello, don't look at him, don't do anything. We're just working on training. And then eventually you can work it up to where the person says hello. You know, they, they, they move a little bit more, you know, desensitizing. Um, you know, they, they take a couple steps, you know, because that can also spook um, Sully. Um, you know, just really, really tiny, minuscule baby steps. And you work your way up to, you know, the center of that target 
would be like walking through, you know, a crowd. And maybe he'll never get there, or maybe he will, and it just takes some time. That's just how I would work with it, where you work, you know, uh, kiss. You know, keep it stupid simple. Or as people will say, keep it simple stupid. Uh, I don't like, <laughs> I know I call a lot of people stupid. Miss Healer Mama is certainly not stupid, so just keep it stupidly simple. Soup, or, or super simple instead of stupid. Keep it super simple with Mr. Sully and just look for anything, you know, if, if you're, you think you're rewarding your dog for nothing, you're giving him a free cookie. Well, they're not lunging. They're not barking. They're not pulling. They're not growling. They're not freaking out. It, whatever else they're doing, if they're just sitting there staring into space, that's okay. For a reactive dog, I will take it and we can work our way up to other distractions. And it's like, I don't know how to cure this. Well, maybe not cure it, but you know, whatever word I'm supposed to use on the internet Management. these days. And when it comes to <laughs> other dogs, like, you know, he's back at the point where he's, like, pulling himself and jumping up and slamming into houses and Aww. things like that. And But then he has, like, really good moments like this. Look at you not reacting. Good. This is a perfect boy, moment to reward. Good boy. Just being curious. Very good. And this is a moment where after a few few seconds of looking in this direction, I might go to the left or right side and, and start backing away as how as how I, I've demonstrated how I call dogs back to me because I want to reward him and, and reinforce that. I want to break up that, that eye contact and the interest because it can quickly go from interest to, you know, uh, you know, he has a very tall, stiff tail um, versus it being at half mass, you know, even with his spine or, or even a little wag, you know. Um, there's a little bit of tension on the leash. I think it's a retractable, um, so that can also add to from excitement to agitation. So I like to, I absolutely like to let them look at this, you know, as long as they're not growling. But after, you know, if they're staring there for a little bit, I might call them back and then say, okay, and then they can go and sniff again. Um, that for me, uh, which reminds me of the other point I was going to make before I went on a super long tangent, but when she said that her other dogs, you know, the girls know how to tell a dog off and then that's it and they move away. And a lot of dogs don't know how to do that. Like the Australian Shepherd that I work with, Lola, she will run up to you, lay down, leaning against your legs and go belly up. And as soon as you try to pet her, she will start growling. And eventually, if you don't leave, she'll snap. Because she thinks she's doing the right answer. She thinks she's giving you the right answer. That she thinks she has to put herself in this position. She doesn't realize that she's trapping herself and dogs are great at getting themselves cornered and not knowing how to get out so with her when she would naturally do that with new people she comes up you know she rolls over for petting you pet her a couple seconds and then she starts growling i wouldn't even pet her i would just ignore her and even ignoring her she can still growl you know she might still growl so i just take a treat and i just toss it away from me and over time she learns oh i don't even have to come do the little song and dance if i just come sit calmly i you know i can get a reward or i get you know to play ball, which is her, you know, one of her favorite things, you know, so we switched up, of course, from the, the, the high rate of reinforcement of food to playing ball. Very good. So this is perfect moment to have lots of reinforcement, you know, for, for me, you know, helping him overcome his aggression, you know, lots of, if he's a chow hound, he likes his kibble. Great. You, know, you can use that for a lot of little simple behaviors, but I would I definitely find it easier and quickest to move on through this this um, you know type of training by using high value reward. It can be a you know a little bit of some boiled chicken, it can be um, a carrot, you know, a piece of a baby carrot, whatever you know. But just just or, or dehydrated beef liver, lots of little bits of reinforcement just really seems to set in stone and it really just seems to speed up the process alert in that clip and it's not like and he's still reacting he's not reacting but he's not reacting badly he's i thought he was perfect and lunging and jumping around i thought that was great person, you know? but it's those moments i love but then it's like we get into other situations and so that would be a moment you know the previous moment is those are the ones where you want to set up the best you can um, to be able to control it, plan for it, set up, and practice that as often as you can and really take time to reinforce it for, you know, I tell people, uh, you know, I would say maybe if I were working with a client, practice doing that for seven days straight or maybe even two weeks or 10 days. 
go set it up to where you're at a distance away from another dog where he's he's calm just like we saw in the previous clip and reward every time he looks at you on his own um, and do that as boring as it seems and you may think that we're ready to move on you're not do it for two weeks and then we can start getting closer to the dog or try something else okay so here is crazy dog over here we have him on a short tight lead um, on the collar so that can you know it's a regular flat buckle collar which I appreciate um, but that can still tension on the body it can send the dog into you know fight or flight opposition reflex you know he can be more agitated he's short and tight there's pressure behind him by pressure I mean there's a child or people walking up on him can add to to uh, anxiety or excitement there's a dog over here he has his little friend all sorts of stuff is going on so this is gonna happen it doesn't mean it's the end of the world you know you do your best to get through it the best you can and then if if you can and you're willing to i would say and i've been through situations just like this with clients time and time again more times than i can count and even remember i would say okay we're going to go to as simple of a spot as we can you know as low low distraction and we're going to try and just stand there and our dog can do whatever they want on a, on a loose leash you know give them six foot leash usually i like to work with regular leads until you know regular leash um, until, you know, I know the dog, unless we're working on recall or the dog is really, really good, we can use these um, retractables. That's just me. But I would just stand across the street wherever he can stand and look like he did in the previous clip. And he can look at the dog, and when he looks away, he gets a little treat. Practice that for two minutes or five minutes or ten minutes. And do that every day for at least seven days in a row. Maybe even two weeks. And then slowly slowly get a little bit closer and do the same thing. So, I mean, this, I would expect this. And so I, you know, I, I've had many, many dogs that I worked with where we just, you know, I, I expected this. So I have low expectations. I don't, you know, plan, I, I plan for the dog to, okay, we're going to regress a little bit in training, but as long as we can control the rest of the time that we train, to prevent this from really sinking in and this becomes the new right answer, the new go-to behavior or reaction, um, then we're okay. You know, it just, I, I don't get mad at the dog. I don't say anything to them. We just keep walking. Not too bad, but usually he's jumping up at the house. Hi, kitty. himself and choking him. Yeah. Himself. So I mean, I either way, he he's gonna be put, you know, pulling him, putting pressure on him. I think a harness would be like a great thing to use on him, because it doesn't put that much more pressure and choking on his on his throat. You know, some harnesses they can still dig into the 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 um, collarbone, uh, but a harness, you know, the, it, you have more pulling power because the dog, you know, it's it's around the engine of your your, your little freight train, but you know. Just teaching the dog to be able to walk on a loose leash in distractions can also help you. You know, there's it's a whole the totality of circumstances. Everything all together, you can work on any little thing that you want to. Um, oh, I love these little dots on his toes. How cute! I'm saying leave it and come over here to the front door, but the kid's still walking fucking behind us. Yeah, I I've been there. I've been there. Hey, just keep walking. Come on. There you go. There you go. Just get that energy up. Just keep walking. Maybe walk a little bit faster or just, you know, just keep focusing on your dog. I, I, I've been there with, you know, sounds like she's getting nervous. She's frustrated. Just do the best that you can. Okay, Hi, little man. Oh, and I mean, he, he loves his mom. You know, he's a good boy. He has a good mom. You know, she's just being human, and I appreciate her being vulnerable and showing us this. I mean, I always, you know, I try my best to leave in mistakes that I make, you know, in my training. Um, you know, I certainly don't need to hide them, um, and I like to point them out to say, hey, look, I did this wrong. It's not the end of the world. We don't need to beat ourselves up. We don't need to try to attack ourselves. Just take it and learn from it. Training was like totally off. It was totally bad. That's I wasn't okay. Doing correct commands. I was frustrated. You and you know, in that moment, I don't think you even need to give any cues or commands. Um, it's just a difference in word. You know, like I, I use cues, but you don't even need to give anything. If I were there with her, I would say, "Don't say anything. Just start walking." Or if you're walking and ahead of you know ahead of time enough to know that there's a dog behind that, I would say, "Maybe let's cross the street." And we can prevent that over time we can work up to it but we're not ready for that yet but 
in that moment, I would say just start walking forward. Don't say anything because then your dog learns to not ignore this or that this this cue or command now is associated with a negative behavior. We literally had that dog slamming into the window, which that's the house he always slams into. And I tried to avoid that, but I couldn't go across the street because there was people and dogs on that side. There was a kid be walking behind us going faster at the time. It, it was a mess. But then we go back to the yeah. house, you know, and he does way better. So, I mean, I've been there before where you're just trapped on all sides. Now, we're here. We have, uh, it looks like, um, I don't know if you, this, this dog was, um, if she had the three dogs earlier or not. I know that there was definitely two leashes in one hand. We're at night. There's less people. So this is something you can set up. The environment is different. The environment is different. So you can set this up and just practice at this time or in this type of environment and reinforce this and only do this with him, um, either whether he's alone or with the other dogs. I mean, it is gonna be more work, but if you only were to practice this for a long enough period of time, um, the other behavior will become extinct. You know, he, he practices this more often. It builds his confidence. You know, you have confidence in him. You have trust. And then you slowly start to integrate some people on the other, you know, a time of day where there's people on the other side of the street or people behind you or set up with your friends or whatever. I mean, again, it's work, but it's absolutely possible. So I don't know if that's him. He's already, he knows this dog is here. His tail is up. It's very high. This is kind of a warning sign that he's, you know, he might be more, he has more excitement. He's more stimulated. So at this first sign, I might kind of stop here and just stand here, stand on the side over here and just let the dogs stand there on a loose leash and relax until this tail goes down a little bit more. Then we'll walk a little bit more because, you know, with the tail this high, I want, <laughs> I know it's kind of blurry, but versus the girls, totally down. His tail is up. So we know that this can kind of be his state of mind. So he's already preparing for it. So if we know he's preparing for it, I want him to, this is the first thing I work on. Okay, red flag, your tail is up. We're gonna go back a few feet and we're just gonna stand here on the side. And training should be boring. And then you walk a little bit more. If that tail goes up, we'll see how he does and we'll stop a little bit. And over time, when he walks by, when he can look like them, then we can go straight through. <laughs> oh yeah. He knows exactly where we're going. And so that is, you know, already something that he he anticipates. And so he's he's anticipating practicing that behavior again. You can absolutely change that in his mind if you practice it slow enough. Very good. Very glad that he was able to come. I would have rewarded for that. Um, I mean, this is a perfect spot that you can start training in and just take this little path, whether he's by himself or what you have the girls too. I would have my little treat pouch and I would just start walking and rewarding. Or if you don't want to use a treat pouch or treats, then you can just stop and use sniffing and use forward moment at movement as his reward. Okay. Or you don't have to do any of that. I mean, you could throw a piece of, I don't know, bologna at him or throw a chair at him. I mean, you could do whatever you want. Girls, why don't you just, can you walk? Why are we slowing down? <laughs> Which is actually it, probably a better thing is just slow down and chill. Let the, instead of trying to just bulldoze your way through, not that they're bulldozing, but just instead of trying to speed through it and get through it as quickly as possible, stop and smell the grass, stop and smell the roses, you know, if you can. Of course, we don't want to hold up traffic behind us, but. Okay. Yep, we saw, ooh, that was a beautiful picture. We're going to go back here. Okay, so I don't know how well you can tell, but this is a perfect picture of a dog that is um, very stimulated. Tall, stiff tail. He's on the forward of his feet. He has, looks like some hackles are up, which is the hair in the back of his neck and down his spine, pilo erection, ears are forward. He has this big wrinkle. His lips are back. And usually with an open mouth and lips back, you're like, oh, they're, they're usually more happy, more comfortable. But he has this big wrinkle here. Adonis would get this when he was at the vet and he was, he was, um, you know, more nervous. The eyebrows are up. You know, this is very stimulated, very nervous, and this can easily lead to agitation or or reactivity um you know adonis would have this at the vet he'd be but he'd be sitting there you know shaking <laughs> but you have this little lip curl like not necessarily lip curl but this little cheek wrinkle here 
is usually a dead giveaway along with all the rest of the body language. So again, totality of circumstances. Can you just leave it, sir? Look at him. He's just ignoring me. <laughs> no, he he's he can still hear you. He's just he's so used to moving forward and focused on this. He's he's getting above threshold. So he he's not necessarily trying to ignore you. He's just so focused on this. He anticipates the the feeling that he gets when he gets to this house, which is apparently reinforcing enough that he wants to, you know, he's showing with his body language. He gets excited coming up to this house. <laughs> just walk. Leave it. So the little tail wag there, you know, at the point previously where he was standing there, I might have just walked back and gone back the other way or walked back a few feet and gone across the street, you know, because I want to prevent even this kind of behavior here at the fence or at the house. No, leave it. And his tail is going not only straight, but now it's curling over. He's getting more stimulated. Okay, keep walking. It's the absolute randomness that kills me with this dog. Like we even met a French bulldog and he and the girls, I wish I would record it because this, this was the perfect example of my frustration with, with him and his reactivity is he was, you know, they did butt sniffs, but butt sniffs. <laughs> I don't know what a sniff is. is. <laughs> butt sniffs, and you know, they were wagging tails and it wasn't like a, I'm going to attack you waggy tail. It was kind of playful. And then all of a sudden he like, looked at his sisters and then went into attack mode and let out that siren bark at this poor French bulldog. And, and it was like, okay, so this, this just got ruined because you chose to do something wrong. Or maybe it got ruined because I did something wrong. I, I don't know. I wish I would have recorded it though, but it's really hard to record sometimes walking three dogs. I'm still not sure how I'm able to get any clips whatsoever. So my goal for him at this point is just to retrain, do more practice, and give him till he's three years old because <laughs> some cattle dogs just need that extra year to get their stuff together. <laughs> and I know I need to get my stuff a little bit together because I know I, I am getting very frustrated because I'm done. I'm so done because I know he knows like that. That's what's pissing me off is like, he knows what I'm asking him. It's just, he chooses. It's that I do what I want attitude. And I know. And so that's where I hear a lot of that with, with certain breeds, you know, especially with the Sheba. I mean, growing, you know, raising a Sheba, people are like, oh, they're stubborn. Blah, 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 blah. They're, they're, they're. But yeah, they, your, your dog can be stubborn. But the thing about that where there's, I don't see from the clips I've seen, that to me does not look like he is purposely trying to defy you. He is just too over threshold, too nervous, too excited that he can't follow what you're telling him to do. He may know it. He may not know it in this context. You know, if, if he does know it, dogs, you know, Adonis, my Sheba was, was great at, you know, he taught me that dog, you know, he demanded respect. You are going to respect him. You're not going to tell him and yell at him, come here, come here. He's going to flip you off and say, fuck you and go the other way. And as he should, <laughs> you don't be screaming at anybody and get your way with that. I'm not saying that that's what she does, but with him, it had to make sense. Why should I leave, you know, the, the, this cat alone or this, this gopher in this hole, you know, why should I leave it alone if you're just going to yell at me or if you don't have something more worth it for me? Like, hey, that makes total sense. So I take time to prepare him for that. I reinforce him for that. You know, I show appreciation for him that just because he's a dog does not mean that he has to be, he doesn't have to be my slave or he doesn't have to be my assistant or, or anything like that, okay? So he taught me that, yes, as a human owning a Shiba, you have to work hard to get my respect. And, and, and in doing so, you know, he... he gave me his respect uh, and not through through harsh corrections or, or screaming or anything like that i mean you know sure you're screaming anything loud enough you know it'll listen but um but you know donis was just a, a terrific dog and it seems like sully i think you know any of these kennel dogs are, are wonderful i think sully you know if if she can listen to what he's telling her and really have an open mind um and think like a dog and think like a, a cattle dog that he can be to her as Adonis was to me. I mean, he is an actual, Adonis for me was a lifesaver, literally and figuratively. Like, you know, I'm here and alive and breathing because of him. 
he taught me so much uh, and taught me you know what it means to to you know gain the trust and and respect of your dog so you know it's not necessarily that you know if you change your the way of thinking of he knows and he's choosing not to put yourself in his shoes you know really think very simply dogs are very simple creatures um and and you know they take work you know these these breeds i mean I, i'm sure as she knows she's had seven before you know but there's always that one you know like labs there could be that one that that's not that happy go lucky whatever or there's border collies that are that what they call sleeper collies or couch potatoes <laughs> you know shebas you pretty much <laughs> know what you're gonna get um but you know and i and i feel cattle dogs are the same way uh, they have that spunk that attitude and i appreciate that um because they keep you honest and and they tell it bluntly um so you know if you listen to him and and you know don't think of it as he knows and he's choosing not to think of it as he he's trying but he just can't fight his nature you know he's just nervous so break it down think you know you know empathize with him and and work to help him and and try you know if you can try not to um or don't you know what of course and you know again this is all unsolicited advice but you know work little steps and give him you know give him that time and, and give him that one-on-one -on -one time that i think he needs and you need you know you can you can fix your bond with each other um you know i, I think it's i think you are more than capable of it healer mama um, I feel like Sully is absolutely capable of it. He's still very young. I'm happy to, to, to make videos for you for free. You know, I'm happy to work with you for free. Of course, not that oh, obviously that you ever have to. I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm so great that I can help you all. I'm just saying that I'm happy to work with you all. Um, if you ever feel that that is, is something that you're interested in. Um, but it, just because, you know, this is something I enjoy doing. I enjoy helping people with their dogs. I enjoy, if I could do this all for free, I absolutely would. And someday maybe I, I hope to, if I can ever, you know, afford that kind of lifestyle where I can, I can do that, where I can train with people for free, I will absolutely do it. That is my dream. Um, because I don't do this for the money. You know, I do it because I, I have to live, you know, but, um, but I, I love it. I, I love doing this. So Oh, this was a really long video. Sorry. I didn't expect it to go that long, but um, thank you for watching. Thank you, Healer Mama, for the shout out. Thank you for allowing me to to look into your videos and critique them. I hope I wasn't, you know, hard on you. If I was, I do apologize. I, I don't mean anything personal. Um, I really do just mean this out of, out of you know, love and peace, peace and love, you know, and, um, and I've been there before with my Sheba. When I was 18 um, up until, you know, 30. So he's taught me a lot. You know, he's a little legend and he will continue to teach. Um, and hopefully that helps anybody out there um, who, who watches this video. Thank you so much to everyone for watching, for supporting. I hope this is able to help anybody out there. Um, be sure to go say hi to your little critters. Say how do you do to the girls and Mr. Solly for me and for everybody else. Say how do you do to your little critters. Give them some kind of loving that they appreciate. And until next time, stay positive.